In this presentation, we will take a look at the present value of an annuity calculation. We have our information up top. We're going to enter that information into the blue area down below. We can do this a few different ways. We could use a formula to calculate the present value of an annuity tables, or we can use Excel functions to calculate the present value of an annuity. Our data is going to be the number of periods. We're going to say three. We're going to say that those periods are years in this case. We've got the payments. It's going to be 100, meaning we're going to have payments that are going to be made each of three years, three payments of 100 in consecutive intervals, one year apart. And then we have the rate, which we're going to say is 10%. So the way we can calculate this is we can use a formula to do so, or because they're going to be consecutive payments that are all the same, we can use an annuity. In other words, we don't have to present value each of the $100 payments, but can rather do the whole thing with one type of calculation. One way to do that is with the tables commonly used with problems that are going to be book problems or test problems because they don't require a calculator but also don't require us to know complicated formulas when our goal is really to use the formulas rather than just basically know or practice the math of them. So we're going to say, all right, the payments are going to be here and we're going to have the periods and the rate. So if we use the tables, then note that the periods and the rate have to line up these being years, this is a yearly rate. This is the number of periods in years, so they do line up. And we're going to say this is 10 out to 10 and 3. So 10 and 3, if we see that, that's going to be that uh, 2.4869. So we're looking for the rate of 2.4869 is what we want. It's going to be the $100 up top, and this comes from the table. And that's going to give us our present value. So this is going to be our present value of the annuity, present value of the annuity. Let's paste it in here like so. And we'll multiply that out. This will equal the 100 times that amount. And that gives us the 248.69. And this is kind of what we would expect because we would expect something to be a little, something less than 300 because in terms of actual payments, we have 300 times three. We have $300 worth of payments. If we present value it, if we pull it back to the current dollar amount, then we've got the 248. And again, it's useful to think about these as if we're making basically cash outflow payments. So if we're making payments this year, then next year, and then the year after that, how can we take the value of those payments into the current time period? It's going to have to be something less than the 300 that we flowed the 300 payments because the future payments are not worth as much as the ones today. Now we'll do the same thing with a formula. So we're going to go and take our same information and put this into a present value for a formula within Excel. So to do that, one way we could do that is we can go to the formulas up top. We can go to the insert function and we could type in present value to, to search for it. Let's type that again, present value. And we're looking for the PV present value. Now the present value, the PV is going to be the same for an annuity as well as the value of one, but the way we enter the data will differ. So we wanna be very clear that it's gonna be the same, which is nice, because we only need to know this one item for both of those present value and present value of an annuity. However, we need to know the difference between entering the data for those two. So we'll say, okay, here's our dialog box, and we're gonna enter up top, starting out with the rate. The rate is gonna be this 10%, it's in B4, so that's in B4 number of periods the number of periods will be three so it's going to be three periods these are years so note that the rate is in years the number of periods is in years and then we have the payment the payment is going to be the 100 dollars. remember that the payment it was not used when we had present value of a single item present value of annuity we will have the payment which means that we're going to have the payment each year each time period now that gives us our result of the uh, negative 480, uh, 248. And then of course we would flip the sign because if we don't want the negative. So I'm going to say, okay, if I want to make it a positive number, I'll double click on it. I'll put a negative before the P and enter. And that'll flip the sign back to a positive number. If we were to enter this directly into Excel, we would say equals negative present value brackets and then the rate is going to be in b4 so it's in b4 on the rate then we'll say comma and then we've got the number of periods the number of periods is three and then we're going to say comma and then the payment 
the payment is going to be $100. So payment is $100. We have no future value type. Those aren't necessary for the formula and enter. That's what we have. Now we can also use goal seek if we wanted to use this formula to find some other area. If we, if we knew, for example, that this was going to be 248.69, but we didn't know the rate. We know the periods, we know the payments, we know the uh, present value of an annuity. We don't know the rate. Well, we could use goal seek to do that. And the reason we would want to do that is that we can then use the same present value formula for these multiple items. So the way I would typically do that is just pick a rate first, just guess a rate like 2%, then enter the present value formula. I'm going to do it by just typing it in this time. Negative present value, double click the present value. We're going to pick up the rate, which we're saying is 2%, comma, and that's wrong, but we're just going to guess that for now. And then we're going to say the number of periods is 3, comma, and the payment is going to be 100, and enter. And now I'm going to ask Excel to, to use goal seek to change this uh, number until it gets this uh, calculation to what we know it should be 248.69. So let's, let's take a look at what that would look like. We'll go to the data up top. We'll go to the uh, forecast. We want to do the what if analysis and we'll do the goal seek. Goal seek. And here's going to be our dialog box, our function box. We're going to say set cell. So we want to set this cell to be what we know the answer is 248.69 by changing this cell. So let's go through that again. Set cell B19, this cell, to be 248.69 by changing the one we don't know that we just guessed, which is the 2% in B17. Okay, and then it'll figure that out, which of course is our 10%. Now, if this, I'm gonna add a few decimals here, and there's our uh, 248.69. Now we could do that same thing, of course, if we didn't know the number of periods. We could say, all right, let's just guess the number of periods. Let's just say that we're saying 20 periods. I have no idea. And we're going to say, I know what the answer is. It's 248.69. But I want to type the formula in here and then ask Excel to change this number to what it should be to make the formula uh, give us what we think it should, which is the 248.69. So once again, we'll say negative present value, double click the present value. The rate is 10%, comma. Number of periods is 20. It's wrong, but I'm going to keep that for now, comma. And then the payment is 100 and enter. So again, this number is wrong because it's not this, but now we can use goal seek to change this to what it should be. So what we'll do is we'll go to data up top. We're going to go to the forecast, what if analysis, goal seek. And then we want to set this cell to be the 248.69 by changing this cell. So once again, we want to set this cell to be 248.69 by changing this cell, the periods. And if we say, okay, it'll figure that out. And it says it should be three, which of course is our, is our answer.